Yep. Yeah, I'm the youngest MP since ever, I think, since it was 1707 the union started, so... Not that I'm counting, you know. <laughs> when I was doing the maiden speech, I mean, the, the great thing about it is you get about six or eight minutes where you're uninterrupted. Now, probably never again are you going to speak in the chamber where nobody can interrupt you. So my thinking was this is a, a big opportunity to talk and people have to listen. So um, that when I went to do that, all I was thinking was this is what you were sent here to do. So make it count. Kind of thing, you know. So it, it wasn't, it wasn't nerves or anything. I was more just pumped up to do it because I thought, right, this is it. <laughs> Job starting. <laughs> it's an experience, but I think it's an experience that all MPs are getting. There's no distinct thing because I'm young. My family were always kind of interested in politics, but they were never really active. But what really changed was the referendum, and all of a sudden politics was spoken about every single day. And before you knew it. We found ourselves out chapping on doors and talking to people about politics until it got to the point where I was choosing to go and, you know, knock people's doors rather than go out with my friends. <laughs> so politics became a part of everyday life. I would have been 17, 18. So in fact, I 17. I actually never had any intention of running for anything, really. Um, certainly not the UK Parliament, but the way it worked out was that there was too many people asking me to do it. Um, so it got to a point where I, I kind of felt guilty if I didn't. So I put my name forward. Well, I, I had to think about it, put my name forward, and then ended up here. <laughs> Very first thing that happened to me was a journalist trolled through my Twitter account back to when I was about 14 or 15 and pulled out, you know, daft teenage tweets from me. But, you know, that was used by political opponents and things to try and discredit me. So that, that was an experience because at no point when, you, when you're an adult do you think something that your teenage self stupidly said is, is going to be cast up, but that's it's a problem that many folk are going to face in the, in the future, I think. It's one of those things, I mean, to me it's kind of like global warming. How can anybody disagree with it? You know, how can anybody legitimately say there shouldn't be more women in politics? You know, surely uh, it's just a given. So. I think there's definitely more women needed, just in terms of representation, but also, certainly from the angle that I see politics, when you look at inequality, women are always hit worse than men. Women are always suffering more than men and always have done. So the more women can get involved and try and change that, then the better it is for, for everybody. I think it's healthy to have a good mixture of people. And the only way you can get a mixture is if young people go, well, actually, if I want to change things, I need to get involved in it, rather than, you know, if you sit there and go, well, I'm not going to vote, nothing changes, well, nothing will change, and why would you ever expect anything to change if you just sit on your backside? So I think once people get involved, that's what shakes things up a bit, always has.